I couldn't possibly read these emails every day. So I trained a machine with about every little detail of my voice. I gave it the full schnitzel experience and you know what? I can barely tell the difference. Your stem cells, Chris? I got my stem cells on my knees done in Dallas. Um, oh. I remember I told you guys that a story, but my, one of my clients made a miraculous recovery in his shoulder after 10 years from a shoulder injury in uh, football, Division One football. And um, I was like, dude, I don't know. I don't buy into that shit. So I just ended up biting the bullet and doing it, and it's been five weeks now. Uh -huh. And I, I didn't want to jinx it or just call it coincidence, but yesterday I went to go train legs. And obviously, my knees have been feeling a little bit better. I went to go train his legs yesterday. And honestly, shit you not, I started to have that feeling I did when I was young where you're just able to kind of accelerate out of the hole with a little little speed. And I was like, no knee pain, just quad tension. I was like, whoa. Did the entire workout. Both quads were massively pumped. And I left there thinking my knees are going to be stiff once the pump goes away. Nope. And then I'm sitting here right now, and I don't have my knees swollen. They're not throbbing or burning like they normally do. And okay, I'm enough, like, enough, enough. I'm sold. Oh. Do you have a discount code, total 10? <laughs> it cost me six grand. I paid cash up front. Okay, okay. There's two, there's two different stem cells. So there's the, um, the exosome ones, which are like kind of like easy to get. And there's the umbilical cord one, which are illegal in the U.S., so supposedly the umbilical cord ones are magical. I was talking to Ed Cohn and he's had the uh, umbilical cord ones, Antoine from BioAccelerator. BioAccelerator is the company in Colombia. They're the ones that have done all the major high profile guys. He told me that the ones, the mesen, I think those are the mesenchymal ones. Those are the ones that are better for joints. Um, and then there's ones you can get in US and other places where the regulation is more strict about using things like that, which are better for soft tissue. So he actually, Dr. Akon, that works with uh, you guys. Oh um, yeah, he, yeah, a deal. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah, he had the uh, the non mesenchymal ones, I think, done um, with him in Florida, and he said that was better for soft tissue stuff. So I don't know what you had, Chris, but I don't know what's wrong with your knees. But it's pretty encouraging to know that you can get stem cells done in the U.S. for some things, and they fucking work. <laughs> Yeah, so they pulled eight tubes of bone marrow out of my hip. And then I had to leave for like four hours and they take whatever stem cells are out of my bone marrow of my hip, circle through this machine, and they inject it into my knees. And then I come back 72 hours later and then they do PRP to accelerate the mm. healing process. And then I go back actually this coming Wednesday for the final shot of my knees, of both knees. I have chondromalacia, so both MRI show deterioration of cartilage underneath the kneecap. So obviously from like heavy load in the bent position of the knee, flexion of the knee, um, is my meniscus is intact. It's the cartilage underneath my patella that's destroyed. The patella um, tendon? The, no, the patella, the soft tissue under behind the patella, uh, behind the patella. Okay, my my issue is uh, the muscle underneath the kneecap, the the patellar tendon, the one that sits right below the damn cap. Yeah. For fucking twenty years, man, it's been bad, and it's, <laughs> it doesn't get any better as I get older and use it more. Yeah, mm. dude, the doctor was good. Like he was like he was telling me, he goes, "Well, the results vary because it usually varies on two factors, three factors. One, the ability for that individual to eat healthy, exercise, continue to do mobility work. Obviously, the aftermath of maintenance." And he goes to what level they are of breakdown. He goes, unfortunately, most people come to me when they can't even walk, right? It's kind of like they're 55 years old and they've gotten to the point where they can't even stand up. So it's like you've gone too far almost. And he goes, and the other thing is what type of injury it is. And he goes, when it's cartilage where you are, considering it's not a level five, he said, I was, I was between level and two, level three. And considering you're young and you're very active, you're healthy, he goes, you should see in really, really good results. But the biggest selling point was I was in the recovery room and this old lady comes in and she's like all happy. And I'm like, it's like, hi, she's like, hi. And then she starts trying to talk to me. And uh, 
She's like, if you don't mind me asking, what, what did you get done? I'm like, oh, I got my knees done. And she's like, oh, me too. What was wrong with your knees? I'm like, oh, I have chondromalacia uh, under my patella. Uh, all the cartilage is broken down. She goes, oh, my meniscus is almost like completely gone and cracked. They were going to have like full knee replacements. That's what they wanted to do. And she goes and she leans over and she goes, I've been able to play tennis the last two weeks. She goes, I've been doing things I've never done before in 10 years. And her husband's there. She's like, she was on Celebrex, Advil every day to be able to sleep at night because her knees were such in bad shape. And now she's like, I have no pain sitting here. And I'm like, and now shut her up. Husband, her, her husband's like, yeah, now she's going to ride my cock pretty good. Back like in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now she can get her knees and give a blowjob. But like, dude, <laughs> I was like, I was like, in my head, I'm thinking to myself, all these good stories are occurring. I'm like, I hope it fucking happens to me. I, would, I don't want to be that one guy where it's like, oh, it didn't work. You know what I mean? Well, it seems to be working. That's cool. And, and, boom. Oh, oh, shit. Got the juji pants. That's good. Lexia, Lexia goes, they're a little loud. They're a little loud. Like, what do you mean loud? That's she goes, the point. they're fucking bright. I'm like, that's the point. Well, what what podcast are we on now, Antoine? <laughs> Welcome to We're, the Juji Tuan podcast. I hope you like yeah. the stem cell appetizer. <laughs> yeah, this is the Juji Tuan cast. Yeah, well, I'm good. Juji just came back from his trip, the Shaw Strength Classic. I came back from the boat cruise. You, Frank was in Texas. Tuttle has a new knee. Fucking everything's good. <laughs> yeah, everything. And Tuttle lives in Texas. Yeah. Dude, didn't you get sick after Vegas? Everybody got sick after Vegas almost. No, I don't think I did. Oh, Taylor did. I did. James Taylor did. did. We said. all did. We got crushed. No, no. Maybe Juju is always sick. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, like Taylor, she got COVID twice, positive on the test and everything, and both times was making out with her and everything, and I, I was fine. Dude, how yeah. was the boat cruise? Oh, boat cruise was great. I, I recommend that to uh, any bodybuilders who want to travel and don't want to really get out of like the hotel. The hotel moves with you, so it's very practical. Yes. So you got the buffet. You can like bring Tupperware, bring extra food. They had white rice and the protein sources like all day long on the buffet. They even had like a place that was like a taco place where you could have like ground beef and rice and just avocado and, and the salsa, whatever, all day. They have different restaurants too. They had a good gym in there, to be honest, better than I thought. And uh, yes, it was just fun to, um, you know, travel with, in a boat. And it's nice. It, it was Alaska, so it was really cool. Yeah, it was pretty weird because you, you could feel the first when it first got off the the shore, whatever. I was like, holy! I was like, oh, I feel weird. It's like you say your brain doesn't understand what's going on because you don't see outside, but you kind of yeah. see. The hall, the, the the hallway going like a little bit like that, then you readjust and you're like, whoa. The first day wasn't too bad, and then the second day, somebody said, yeah, supposedly the the second day is the worst. You feel sick. Then I was like, right away, I was like, oh no, they're putting it in my head. I think I feel sick. I was like, oh, no, it's in my head. It's in my head. Then I, I try to change my mind, and then I, I was fine because you know sometimes you can make yourself believe that you're sick. Yeah. It's like, oh, fuck, why did they say that? I was doing fine, but I, I was all right. It was okay. Yeah, what cruise line? It was. It's called the uh, Holland American. Yeah, Holland. Yeah, I did that at Alaska too. Oh, you did that? Cool. Yeah, yeah I they like have it. good food. They have good food. Yeah, yeah, they do. I like it to be yeah. honest. I would, I would, I would do like a cruise even for like a the honeymoon with Taylor because it's like a fun way and mm. easy. It's like you go different places. There's, there's, it's kind of that's why old people do it. It's so like easy to do. It's like a lazy traveling. Dude, some of the best comedy I've ever seen were on cruise ship. Really? Or yeah. our comedian wasn't that, not that good, to be honest. The one that we had oh. was like average, but we had a magic show that was good, for real. And, um, yeah, <laughs> it was pretty cool. The guy was good. I was surprised. And um, yeah, we did a few things, but uh, I didn't have any expectations. And I think that's why I enjoyed it. Because I was like, oh, you know what? I'll do my best with training and food, but I don't know what's going to be on there. So I can't be mad once I get there, right? Because I'm putting myself in that situation. Yeah. It turned out it was like I gained five pounds. It was good. I, I had plenty of food, <laughs> so uh, the, so I had like three weight workouts and two cardio sessions only. So it was like a deal old week almost. And well, all the pumps were great. When I came back, I was like, all the pumps have been good so far. Oh, mm. dude, cruise ship is 
is something else. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like there's, it's like a big, I see it like that. The first night I looked outside, it was pitch black and I see all these waves and the wake from the boat clashing together. It's like going really fast. I was like, what the, what the hell? So we're going 30 knots, right? Uh, boat cruise and go. So that's pretty fast for a giant horizontal skyscraper that's going into pitch black ocean. That's what it is. It's, the <laughs> it's a sideways side skyscraper just going through the water. <laughs> I was like, man, this is nuts. True. So, so it, it was pretty fun, though. Did you guys hear about that dude who jumped off the cruise ship, kind of like, kind of horsing around as a joke into like water, and a shark ate him immediately? No way. Uh-uh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Really? I'm yeah. looking this up. Fuck this. They're talking about it on There's Rogan. No way. Yeah. Oh. Well, if so it's on the, Rogan, it's true. So the first, <laughs> the first boat. Let's see ya was made by Albert Ballin for the German Hamburg America Line Company. It was a leisure purpose. The 18 year old jumped off a boat. Was this for TikTok? This had to, it's, I'm blaming fucking TikTok for this shit. So wait, what, yeah, what is and it? he was gone. Could oh, wait, am I right? Am I right? Yeah, it could be. Teenager jumps into water, shark attack right away. Is that right now? 18-year-old Cameron Robbins was celebrating with classmates in the Bahamas when he jumped into a shark and fisted waters. There was a speculation that a shadowy image might have been a shark. However, more experts are weighing in, saying they don't believe a shark ended the, the they don't believe a shark ended the 18-year-old's life. Is that what is that what it is? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. It was on TikTok. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Sorry, guys. What? This is... Idiot. <laughs> that's because... because they found his body, right? It's this fucking TikTok. I swear to God. A TikTok, uh, dude. Well, I mean, just like people do the dumbest shit for, well, I, I, I included, do the dumbest shit for social media, but I've never decided to jump off of a cruise ship. So. Yeah, right there. Dude, that's definitely a shark. Go up to the top. See the headline where he says yeah. he vanished? Right here. He vanished. Yeah, he goes, he swam away from his life preserver and then he vanished. Is that him? Is it Bill here? Should we watch a full video or it's a fucking trap? Does anyone actually report why he jumped off the boat? I mean, he jumped off. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That was a shark. That see, they see, they zoomed in on it. Yeah, that, yeah. He got pulled away too quick, man. Shark. Here's the guy. You see the beginning of the video with a circled whatever that was, and to the left, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a shark. Right there. Yeah. I saw. I saw the. I saw the tail whip. Oh, oh, bye, bye. Oh, that's back towards the shark. Yeah, I mean, surely the kids watched and uh, saw it themselves, right? He can be seen right swimming away from it. Was he naked when he jumped in the water? Yeah. Hmm. Dude, yeah. what an idiot. I can't deal. I can't deal. Think about like ways of dying. Like, do you want to die and be afraid as you're dying? Probably not. Imagine being eaten alive and you can't breathe because you're underwater. It's real bullet, bad, yeah. Well, your eyeballs and your lungs and shit go out way before everything else. And that's, you know, imagine standing over a campfire. You know what I mean? It, it, it hurts. Some of the uh, medieval tortures, like, have you guys read into that? Like, some of the shit that they came up. Oh, they were bored, man. They were bored and vicious. They were super bored. <laughs> yeah, they, they had some really bad ones. The rats, the rats in, like, that metal bucket, and they put that on your stomach, and they heat the bucket up, and the rats eat it, through the body. Uh, yeah, Boy, there's so that. many of them, man. There was, uh, what was the one now? where they had a giant bowl? I think this is in Spain. And they put the guy in the bowl with a little door, and he's like inside this big iron bowl, and they just have a fire underneath it, and you just slow cook inside of this metal bowl thing. The metal boots, and they fill it with hot oil, and they stick their feet in it, and they wait long enough so they can just pull it out, and there's nothing but bone. It just pulls the meat <laughs> right off the bone. We've come yeah. a long way in being civil. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we became so obsessed with productivity. <laughs> and time saving things that we're just like, how could we kill people faster? Hang them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, think about it, right? It's like now you have murderers that murder like 30 people. We're like, oh, we'll just give him a cell, give him food, dental, free healthcare, rest of his life, no death penalty. 
And back in the day, it's like, you stole an apple? We're cutting off your arm with an axe. Yeah. <laughs> that dude who killed Chris Kyle. Do you remember that Navy SEAL, that famous Navy SEAL? Um, they, they, dude, they deliberated his verdict in like fucking two hours. I think he was like put to death. I think he was, uh, I think he's already put to death already. It was relatively what quick. You, what are you finding there, Antoine? Ten brutal ways of crucifixion? Yeah, that's a that's a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> Slowly bleed to death from your hands as you're hanging from a cross. Yeah, that, that shit sucks. <laughs> yeah, and you know what's you know crazy? Um, they, they crucified Jesus upside down. Because the real yeah. way to crucify people, I heard, was actually with the – the, the the head down so the, the blood goes out faster so they made him up upwards so he would die slower that's a rumor no. No. Now, let me let me let me ask you guys something so you're Look in a situation holding hands that's ai oh. art right there no it's the dance of right. grass by fence it's not van kessel 1690 yeah he's artificial <laughs> intelligence back then <laughs> he was a robot yeah maybe he was. So let saying? me ask you guys something a theoretical and, and this is how i would do it so if i were getting caught by an enemy or getting caught by in any situation where they're gonna probably torture me or kill me in a bad way i'm gonna fight to the death at that point to make sure that i get killed in that fight and i don't get stretched apart case yeah. in point, okay <laughs> case in point so when i, I see like the part dude when i when i see uh um and that obviously I'm speaking just from what I see. There could be more to it. But when I see like terrorists and they used to like behead people on TV, I'm thinking to myself, man, if I'm in the Middle East and Al Qaeda get tries to get a hold of me and goes, Don't move, we'll shoot you, motherfucker. I'm just gonna go bullshit and get shot there. I don't want to get beheaded on TV. You know what I mean? Like, like where would you be like, okay, shit, sorry, I'll put down my arms, I won't fight, I'll be compliant, so you can set up a camera. And do this whole thing? No, well, fuck that. May, maybe they don't tell them. They, they don't tell them they're gonna kill them. Maybe they tell them like we're gonna keep you there. We're gonna ask you for ransom. Because I'm sure they do. They they won't say like we're gonna cut your head on TV. Maybe they do, but I think it's just like maybe the the, the prisoners are hoping that they have a sliver of hope that somebody will save them. Fuck, fuck that, dude. I'm fighting right there. I'm not getting beheaded oh, yeah? or stretched. Like that. That's some hardcore Pilates right here. All right. Um, <laughs> Oh shit! What's the keel hauling dragging drag drag under? The key hauling yeah. to the non is the ship. Doctors and Merrill, what the fuck is that? Drag along the keel. I don't know what that means. Oh right. Oh, they have these God. barnacles on the bottom of the ship, which is like the hard shell things, and they just drag their body underneath until they bleed to death. I think. Oh my God! Oh, the uh, the rope was looped beneath the ship, and when the sailor was released, they were dragged onto the keel. The fatality rate was pretty 100%. The person did not drown. They suffered severe head trauma from repeatedly smacking against the keel, as well as deep separation from the barnacles of the aquatic growth present on the hull. If they survived, they were and were hauled back on the board. Death will likely still result from wood infections. Oh, Jesus. Whoa. I would fight to the death right there. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking pirates, just kill me. Look at this one here. The wheel. What is this? A severe bashing. Oh my god. That looks real bad. What is going on up there? There's the crazy thing is the crowd. You know? Like, do you imagine crowd. getting rocked to death? Like, like so I think, I think this, is, this is pretty self explanatory. There's like a wheel, I guess, that turns, and there's some guy whacking until he dies. God, it's a slow death. The goal was not to kill them, but severely mutilate them with the executioner starting with breaking the leg bones and then working their way up. They would do this via the, an iron bar. Oh, that's an iron bar. I thought it was wood in my head. Beating the victim to near death, crushing all their bones and bludgeoning them. Once finished, the now ghastly main prisoner would be repositioned on the wheel so that their heels came together at the back of their neck. Wait a minute. What? Once finished, the now ghastly main prisoner will be repositioned on the wheel so that their heels came together at the back of their neck. They will left that way. So that way they just contort the whole body, like they crush the whole body backward. Let's say if, you, if your hips are broken, if your bone is broken at the top, you could literally like bend your leg backwards and just sit on your legs. 
That's pretty hardcore. So, and the crazy thing, that's like number six. We're going up, oh, guys. No. Top five. Who do you got? Top five. And, <laughs> and through the ass it. and out through the mouth. Straight through. Oh, my God. I think that'd be a quicker death than the fucking wheel, dude. The wheel's the worst one so far. Well, they have to do it slow because how do you line it up? It could, like, go out the back. It could go out the ribs. You have to, like, do it just carefully so it goes up between the pelvis, between the rib cage, and up through the neck, out the mouth. Oh, my God, like, look at that. It might come out right here in the neck. Oh, my God. It involved impaling the victim with a long, sharp, and often greased stake for either capital punishment to subdue revolts or to reprimand defectors or wipe out military insubordination in war. Whoa. If you don't fight the war, you get fucked in the ass by a giant grease metal stick. So, so for Lundgren, it was positioned above the spike, which was inserted partway up their pri partway up. What does that mean, partway up? Just like inside the ass? Okay. Gravity took hold. The spike was Oh, no. Ball. Keep reading. It gets worse. Avoiding, avoiding major organs and exiting through the skin of their shoulder or neck. A person could survive this for several days. Oh, no. Snake was in dead pierced through the torso, either from front to back or vice versa. <laughs> uh, several was, days. That's a quicker death. You know, you know what's crazy? We're reading that. We're imagining it. There's some people in the history that actually sat on that spike and just died there. <laughs> Imagine the ag agony. You know you're dying. Because you know, ah. there's, there's only one time in my life I thought I was dying within the next five minutes. And I was convinced I was dying. Trend cough? Trend cough? No, no. I, 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 it was gas. No, it wasn't gas. No, that was the worst pain. That was the worst pain too. But it's just I had like this episode of like, I don't know what happened. It's, I was, it's when I relapsed like, um, was it like a two, two years or some change ago? More than that, three years ago, actually. It's when I relapsed three or four years ago. And I just like uh, took some some weed to go to bed, which I never did. But I, I, I kind of like vaped it like I vape a normal pen. And I think the combination of chemicals, I just like my whole body started like um, convulsing. And I, I thought my veins were getting clogged everywhere. And my heart was like going off the chains, like one thirty, like resting heart rate. That's really and, high for resting. Yeah, and I was freaking out, and and I had like it was really I had the worst pain. It's like everything was. It's like my pain sensors. Something went wrong. Something went horribly wrong, and I thought I was going to die like now. And I was suffering so much. At some point, I even said like, okay, "Go, just take me now." I was ready to die. I was just like, I knew what. I knew at that moment what it feels like when you're about to die for real. Because I was 100% convinced I was dying. I even got up, like, tried to roll the letter. To my, my, I couldn't write a letter. I, I, I was naked. I put pants on because I didn't want my friends to find me naked when I'm dead. You know, because I was naked. So I put pants on. So, like, if, I'm, if I die, at least I'll have pants <laughs> on. So, but, and then, like, uh, Valerie came like she her because I passed out in the shower and then v Valerie came in and she said, "What is it?" I said, "I'm dying." I said, "Look, look at my veins. I'm dying." So at this, she says, "I don't see anything," and I'm like, oh. then "I realized like fuck, I'm freaking out." Well, it went down. But that's still scary as fuck, man. Dude, it went down fifty percent. No, you don't understand. It's the time in my life I was the most scared in my whole life. It's like God gave me a lesson. He was like, you know what? You, you fucking relapse. There you go. Have a gift. And then, oh, and then I was geez. like, uh, I was like, oh, I'm not doing this uh, anymore. But then you know what happened? Two days later, I started again. That so that's the disease for you. <laughs> so uh, I'm okay now. Obviously, two plus years clean. But yeah, so I know what it feels like now, knowing you're about to die. So let's say if, if like you see like a, a wall slowly crushing you with spikes, and there's no way out, and you know you're about to die. I know what that feels like. No, mm. this is why I want to get struck by lightning, or or die laughing, or 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 die having sex. One of those three ways. The best way you, Gene, have you ever had anything like that? What died having sex? No, no, no. Have you ever had any situations where you're like, "Oh fuck, this is it"? No, uh, no. I mean, the the worst I had was I was in the shower and uh, 
it sounds lame, but I was coming down off something. I was not feeling good. And uh, Sam, I didn't know she was home. She rips open the shower and goes, boo, and scares me. And I thought I was going to, I actually thought I was going to die. Like, I had to, like, collapse on the ground. And, like, I thought my heart was going to explode. So, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't as bad as Antoine or Frank. But um, that's the closest I've been to feeling like I was going to die. Yeah. Yeah. The only <laughs> time I can't top you guys at all, not even close, because it was so fast. I told you when I passed out in the gym after a set, I had a very weird sensation come over my body and my chest. Yeah, I just became hypoxic, and my brain was just like, holy fuck, you're going to die at the gym. That's the first thing I thought. And the second thing I thought, when I go, oh, man, Alexia's going to fucking kill me. And that's all I remember. <laughs> really? That's all I remember. That was what it was here. Alexia's going to yeah. kill me for dying in the gym. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm dying. <laughs> it says here, the victim would lie in a prone position and be kept alive. As their bike, their back was sliced open, their ribs were detached from their spine, and their lungs pulled through the opening to form a pair of bloody wings. It is hard to imagine one staying conscious long enough for this to be completed. Nevertheless, if the Viking sagas are to be trusted, this technique has truly earned the spot as one of the most brutal, painful, and downright terrifying ways to die. From what I understand, like they could not go to Valhalla if they made a sound while they were having Blood Eagle performed on them. So if you went ow, you weren't going to Valhalla. Molten gold scorch from the inside. Oh my god. Whoa, dude. Is this Molten like the Midas touch? Scorch from the inside. Whoa, look at that guy. This guy's not look look at this person in the back holding the hair. <laughs> you guys see that? They're all stoned. It's like she looks like just like casually, yeah, kind of stone. You're right. Yeah. So let's yeah, read they're it. all high. Yeah. Look at this. Hey, there's somebody here. He's still yeah, in. she's really high. Yeah. Maybe that's <laughs> the wrong drawing for it. Okay, let's see. Uh, the technique is self-explanatory. The victim will be restrained and their mouth forced open as they heated gold as the heated gold was poured down their throat. The result would be severe damage to the distal organs and the blistering of the lungs, ultimately leading to immediate death. Oh, shit. How would they recover the gold? Yeah, that, like, like, why would they use something so valuable? <laughs> Good question, Chris. Well, where is that gold? That's what I want for my like, I'm going to guess that it just cooled down and solidified. <laughs> they just cut the body open over it and just pulled out the gold, yeah, but gold where, chunks. Yeah, where is that gold throat chunk? I want to see it. Maybe because maybe gold has like a low melting point and you can get gold to melt down quickly. I gotta search for it. Molten Good question. gold. <laughs> Pull up no iPhone. <laughs> Here it is. So this is yeah. the throat gold. This, Until this was oh shit. Burst. That is it. You're right. Until his bowels burst. Man. Dude, that is what? treacherous. What's number two and one on this damn list? Yes, go see it. It's got to be the rats. The rats were already there. The rats were like... Oh, they were? Yeah, they were like, okay. um, I don't know, three or something. Nine. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Flame. Oh, my God. Skinned alive. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but, that's bad. But the, 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 rule, the bashing roulette is pretty bad, too, and like flipped in half. But let's, let's read about it. What is the dog? <laughs> think about this you ever notice that all these pictures always most of the time has an audience yeah yeah right this now, girl's a violin right but think about this in today's day and age if somebody's be put to death it's not like it's public where everybody gets to watch them get electrocuted right because it might be too traumatic for a lot of people back in the day it's like when someone gets skinned they're like great Grab some food. We're going to go watch this dude get skinned alive. It's going to be awesome. Like, they're all, like, all about it. You know what I mean? Like, look at all these people. People are, like, hanging around. Like, this is great. Like, this is terrible. Yeah, they were bored, man. <laughs> look, there's a child That's here. That's fucking wild. Wild. There's a child here. There's somebody playing the violin right here. There's a dog. Yeah, there's two dogs. One here. One here. There's a squirrel yeah. down there? What the oh, fuck is that? Dog. A squirrel? Yeah. Are all these people naked? Guy? Uh, Some of them are. There's a fucking devil right here. Kind of a this, guy, this guy has a modern toque for some reason. Knitted toque. 
<laughs> yeah. okay, let's, let's go read on this. Uh, uh, the victim was first stripped and their hands and feet bound to stop any movement. After this, the executioner would begin peeling away the individual's skin with a sharp blade, often starting with the head, as this area would inflict the most suffering due to the victim still being conscious. In some instances, mm -hmm. parts of the person's body were even boiled to make the skin softer and easier to remove. There were a few uh, ways one could die from this. Uh, shock, blood, fluid loss, hypothermia. Um, the time of death could also be anywhere from a few hours to a few days. Oh my Although God. it was still, uh, considered a rare, it was considered rare medieval times, a flayed body was a message, an eloquent canvas on which the punitive of the secular authority may be written. So that's Jeez. number, that's number two. Ready for number I one, guys? All of these are freaking message, dude. <laughs> None yeah. of these are just like, oh, let me pull out the really bad one. Wait, all of them? They're all really bad. What is this? I haven't heard the, of this one. The Roman candle, the, Roman the ancient candle. world's ultimate torture method. Let's see the picture no way. here. So wait, this is people are bound in like hay or something, and I can't see what's going what on. Going on, dude. Just maybe they're burning alive. It. I don't. I I can't tell what's going on. Here's the crowd. Look at this here. This girl's laying on the other guy. They're partying. Tits are here. This old guy is like with them too. More naked girls with wine. This guy's kind of naked, holding his helmet. Um, more naked people. Yeah, this girl's <laughs> this girl's like kind of like passing out in the front here. There's where where's the guy that's being tortured? Uh, right here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in this one. Here, <clears throat> at the top of the post. See that? Oh, oh, I see. They're up there. They're up there. Yeah, but what's going on? Yeah, fire. They're gonna be burned. Yeah, I'm gonna read They're it. gonna be burned alive. Yeah. Coming in, I get it. Hence the no, Roman candle. Yeah, coming in at number one above all of the brutal ways to die in the, in the ancient world is the Roman candle. Whether it's the execution style itself or the executioner who ordered it, this is a bone chilling on several fronts. A story is filled with ruthless and psychopathic figures and the Roman ruler. Nero is one of them. He hated Christians so much mm -hmm. that he used them as human candles or torches for his garden parties. <laughs> First, the victims were tied and nailed to tall stakes. Then flammable liquid was poured over them before they were set alight. The fire started the feet to prolong their suffering. Whether the Christians had rebelled against the state or not, this was a monstrous way to go. It reflects our barbaric punishments were in the antiquity and how they were often born of man's vicious ego and thirst to dominate, what he considered a lowlier, lowlier populace. Yeah, so yeah. it's pretty much burnt alive, but slowly. But it's also the reason why, oh, I want nice candles for my party. Let's burn these Christians. I thought Roman I think Catholic, N yeah. Nero is renowned as one of the worst rulers of all time. <laughs> what did Nero had? He was, he was literally a, a sociopath. He was Nero, actually a sociopath. Look at that. Nero's yeah. attitude to religion and cults was open. In line with ancient Roman culture, he was a polytheist, aligning himself with the god Apollo. He admired Greek and exotic Eastern culture, which inspired him to become a self-proclaimed living di divinity. Yeah, he's crazy. Yeah, he's, he's a loose cannon. He's nuts. Christians became an easy target. Nero wasted no time. He arrested and tortured all the Christians in Rome before executing them in lavish publicity. I Some think I read that Nero used to dress... He used to dress himself in normal clothes, it looked like a normal person, and run around the streets of Rome uh, stabbing people with knives, like just murdering people, just for fun. And then he would go back and, you know, change back into his king's clothes and shit. I think, uh, you know, Biden's not that bad. <laughs> or, maybe, <laughs> or, or maybe Biden is running around stabbing people with knife in normal people clothes, who knows? Whoa. We've definitely come a long way, that's for damn sure. Yeah, you yeah. know what? Let's complain about fucking pronouns. That's what we're <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how he looks like. like Job of the Hut. Dude, he looks like a, looks like like a big Lenny. He looks like <laughs> a big Lenny. <laughs> big Lenny. 
It's Big Lenny's final form. Big Lenny's final form. Nero. Where where's, where's Big Lenny live? Is he in Florida? He was in Florida, yeah. I've seen a guy who looks like this somewhere. Probably like he looks like a school shooter, to be honest. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. maybe the Colorado shooter? I don't the know. Movie theater shooter? Let's see. Oh, you're going to see if there's a pattern in haircuts here? Oh, no. It, there is. Kind of is. Kind of is a little bit. Weird uh, void in the eyes. Like there. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Wow. What the hell? I know. I like, well, what to be honest, I'm, I, I find all these things very interesting. So uh, a little bit dark. A little bit dark. But I, think, I think around the world, even at this moment, there's some crazy shit happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the thing is, and also, think about that for a second. How long would it take for whatever, Texas, Canada, Ontario, or North Carolina, if the internet would go down, electricity would go down, and then everything would, would, would be closed? Like, how long would it take for for the world to just go back to, like, fucking... Oh, two months at uh, seventy-two hours, like with no authority. Seventy-two well, hours, society would, be, would fall apart. Would be authority, but there would be no way for them to communicate with the world, or maybe like maybe radio would still be on. But like oh, Walking bro, Dead, it would, just, it would be just like the Walking Dead. We have clans. You have clans of criminals that do terrible things. Then you have clans of good people who are armed fighting those groups of people. That's yeah, exactly yeah. what happened. I got a question, Chris. Uh, your opinion on this, since you live in Texas and everyone has a gun. If if it were to fall down like this, like society would start to crumble, he said it'd take two months. Which states would fare better? The ones where the people have a lot of guns or the ones where guns are you know, prohibited more and people have less guns? Well, we know one thing. Cities would fall apart the fastest. Okay. No food, no water. And then criminals would just rape, kill, pillage, destroy everything. That's definitely for that's definitely for sure. Yeah. Um, but I would say it would have to be geographically location. I mean, I would think that the groups or areas that would survive the most would have more room, more space, right? Like New Hampshire, people have resources, running water, rivers, animals to hunt, fish, and they have guns. Um, I think areas where you have to bring food into would be the worst because there's no food or water there already. So that means that's going to run out fastest. Yeah. And then people are going to get crazier when there's no food and water and be more mm -hmm. desperate and do crazier shit. But, um, I mean, dude, my whole street's armed. <laughs> we, I bet my neighbors and they're all like, dude, it's like retired U S army veteran, air force Marine. And like down the street, this guy's like an avid long distance shooter shoots like 1500 yard shots and whatnot. And they're always like, oh, I got night vision everybody's it's just it's just like a cultural thing <clears throat> yeah that's the best i think the thing is if you're a criminal even if you have a gun if you're gonna if you know on that street everybody has guns are you gonna go rob these people no well they, i hear the news here they get shot on a regular basis like in news in texas i always hear like oh home invader tries to break in old lady blasts his head off that happens <laughs> Why do they still try to break in Texas? Like go of they're stupid. Up, up or down they're a couple stupid. states. They're, right? Yeah, they're stupid. Just take yeah. st steal, steal, steal a wallet, buy a bus ticket, go to LA. Yeah. If you're homeless, oh, yeah. that's the way to go. You just go to LA. Or, but well, that's the thing, right? They're crazy. They're oh. crazy. Okay, right, question. The, the, Chris, does Alexia watch that fucking Dr. Pimple Popper shit? Oh no. No. She listens to all the podcasts about murders and unsolved murders. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And she's always telling me about them. And like, just like we're all talking about, like, Frank, like you said, people are crazy. It's like, uh oh. Yeah, you listen to murder all the time. Murder <clears throat> soothes me. Okay, thank you. But yeah, <laughs> she's like, in public, she's like unaware of shit. She'd be like, yeah. totally be a victim. Uh, actually, my pants are really great here. Do you see them? Oh, yeah, what is that? Um, Animals? <clears throat> it's like chihuahuas and random dog. We're like really. Yeah, why did you tell my parents? Why did you tell my parents? How long would it take for us to eat dogs if their world goes down? To eat all the dogs? Yeah. I don't think I could eat the dogs, or at least not my dogs. I couldn't eat my own dogs. We'd we'd starve together. Not my own, but I would eat something else. Somebody else's. Yeah, for sure. Squirrels, squirrels. So yeah, murder mystery. I'm desperate. Maybe a skunk. 
All right, what about, what about murder, though? What are you talking about? I said how girls, we're talking about how fucked up people are, and then that girls like to watch murder shit, and then we talked about how, like, in theory, why would people be breaking into people's houses that have guns, but they're crazy? They're not right in the house. In the well, they, they say that they escalate. So if people start with breaking and entering, they'll <clears> move up to murder eventually. But it's the only like girly thing I do is the murder thing. I but they always they also look for like a, an opportunity. Like it's a it's an easy there, opportunity. There was a serial killer that if you left your door unlocked, he would kill you. If you didn't leave it unlocked, he moved to the next house. He just walked by down the street opening doors to see who was unlocked and anybody left it unlocked. He was like, all right, I'm gonna kill this person. He's in the house. Yeah. What's his? Yeah. What, what's the name of his uh, of this killer? The Keyhole Killer. The Keyhole, keyhole Killer. <laughs> Antoine, you are now the namer of all the serial killers. Thank you so all much. All right. Hmm. The um, yeah, the Keyhole Killer sounds cool. KK. Well, th- think about this, right? If you're a murderer and you've killed multiple people, like think of the level of aggression. Somebody comes into your house and they're like coming at you, like you don't know their intention. But if they have murdered people before, they're probably pretty good at it. They probably might know your reaction or what you're going to do, and they might immediately have an upper hand because they already know what they're going to do. They're experienced, and you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think a lot of people would be, like, confused and, like, saying stuff, and then that gives them time, or they're afraid, they freeze. But what would be the reaction? It's like if you, as soon as you see the intruder, if you start screaming, ah, oh, you're naked, you have an erection, and you run at them, and you fucking try to rape them, you think, <laughs> you think they're going to keep on um, their momentum, or they're going to be like, what the fuck is this? I didn't, I didn't bargain for this. It's probably for sure going to break their focus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if Antoine's running at you naked yelling. <laughs> Look up Richard Chase, Antoine. Richard Chase. Yeah, he's he's disgusting. Is that your crush? <laughs> is that is that your serial killer crush? No. No. <laughs> How Empire creepy is that? Wait. Mental. Think about the women who like are obsessed with serial killers that like killed fifty women. And they were like, "Marry me. I'm gonna visit you in prison." What the fuck? Yeah, there's. Yeah, that's a thing. There's a theory for that. There's even a name for this thing. It's crazy. I think it's just like, it's a survival thing. That's like deep. Like let's say if you, let's say if you're living in a tribe back in like a long time ago and this, you don't have a boyfriend yet. And then there's this guy who just like kills, kills a bunch of people. And he's like the boss, right? He's the strongest guy. The girl will be maybe attracted to that guy to not be killed. You know, so there's one theory. Uh, yeah, and then and then the the other one why girls I think you might you, if you watch Rogan you might have heard that before. The reason why girls maybe are attracted to like serial killers and what they do and like uh, how the murder mystery stuff is that the more info they have, the more they have like information to how to protect themselves and be safe from from them, and unconsciously. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So they they love to be aware of it because like okay, like if I'm aware of that means the more information okay. i have the safer i am unconsciously so that's the theory behind keep it. your and en- keep your potential enemies closer yeah because guys okay. murder mystery is, we don't give a fuck like because the thing is we walk the street <laughs> we walk the street and we don't think about oh like am i safe right now girls from what i've been told they always if they walk the street they're always going to be like Oh, am I safe right now? This could be dangerous. If I'm interacting with this person, they could actually kill me because they're stronger, right? The, if if a man encounters a woman by themselves, the man is likely to kill the woman. It's like as far as like the potential. But if we're both men, we kind of don't know who's going to kill who, right? Because we're both strong. But women are, are at a big disadvantage, so... For them, they're always on the lookout to be safe. They're always like kind of paranoid a little bit, and that's why sometimes, like, um, the, there's a you see these videos they, they exaggerate, but um, the guys like, "Hey, sorry, miss, stay away from me, stay away from me." A lot, like, what the fuck? For them, it's like this could be a dangerous situation, and they're exaggerating, but this can happen. A guy will come, what's up, cars it down, kill the rape, or whatever. But if, if you, a guy, comes in, hey, what's up? Hey, uh, sorry to bother you. He's like, what's up? Like, we're not going to even think about, like, oh, is this guy going to... Oh, we might think, but it's like, we're just... We're not scared. 
women can get scared easily because of that. Dude, in the same token, though, like, I'm not trying to rip apart women, but in my opinion, my experience, overall, I found that women to be less aware in public than, say, me or some other male friends that I'm friends with where we'll be somewhere and my, my buddy would be like, bro, I noticed this dude, this sketchy dude right away. And my girlfriend's just like, what, what, where, what? Like, like they're just, yeah, they're just but not. They, they, they in, are with a bunch surroundings. of dudes. I'm sure by themselves is a lot different. Yeah, that's true. I think so. I think that's my guess. Maybe you're right. Uh -huh. But uh, there's a lot of times I've, I was, I'm walking around and I don't think about my safety. I just walk around and I see, I look at the people, but like, oh yeah, this guy's sketchy, but I don't think like, like who's going to get out of their way. They come try to fight me out of the blue is like a very low chance. Right. If I'm like walking yeah. around, like just, it's, they're more going to be like, cause if, if there's somebody who would, if it's, a, if it's a robber, it's easy to rob somebody weak, but if they see me, they're like, yeah, I'm not going to try to rob that guy. Cause for them, it's yeah. like, uh, how can I make sure I succeed without getting any consequences? This is a guy with a lot yeah. of size. Size equals strength. If it's like, it's like the animal bigger, kingdom too. There's more weight to it. He's stronger. So even muscle, even, even if you don't know how to fight. If you're a bodybuilder, you don't know how to fight, but you can grab someone's throat. You have more chances to kill someone than somebody who doesn't have muscle. There's mental health too. You know, like if the guy's like d depressed, suicidal, or has schizophrenic. It's like a and homeless on drugs. It's like it's a bad mix. That's why you see these videos of in LA. Like uh, I've seen a video of a guy like running around with a sword and somebody else with a knife. Like they were stabbing. Like just ran. It's like crazy, crazy. Dude, did you see the percent of murder cases that uh, murders and they're solved up until like the last five years? The, the murder success rate of finding the murderer was like was like twenty percent. Like they didn't most murders they don't catch. Lex and I were watching forty dollars, and then the FBI guy gave stats on percent of murder solved, and I'm like, "What? It's that low? I thought like ninety percent of people who commit murders get caught. No, it's like the other way around because there's Whoa. so many random murders. Don't tell that to people. They're gonna start killing people again. Well, dude, think about it. Most people get caught. It's always like something intimate, close to them, the neighbor, the husband, the wife. The brothers jealous. Those people get fucking caught. You know, you know, it's kind of like you know, you know how I, you know how I know I'm not a killer because sometimes I say something to someone that I feel bad about it for for three days and I feel like I have to apologize. So so if I feel bad about that, just something I said that I think is wrong, but then the person forgot about it and I feel bad about it. How bad would I feel if I just murdered someone? <laughs> I I would feel really bad about I think that. I think everybody has the capability of doing it if they're pushed for, hard for, enough. For sure, for sure, for sure. But I mean that it's like, you know, like, if you, I don't know if you're like me, but if I say something that I'm not supposed to say, I could have said something else. I, I think about it for a few days and I feel like I have to make amends and apologize. I don't know if it, maybe it's just me, but but uh, imagine if you're like, you just kill someone and you left them in a dish. How do you feel? No, you just. Well, in Texas, that's legal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if no one's killed, you just beat them to like near death and call the cops. Well, now that now that I know now that I know the statistics of murders being solved, hmm. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, yeah. like, it's like if it's like it's happening live, obviously you do your your whole you, with your whole effort. You're gonna try to like immobilize and like um, how do you call that? Not, it's like there's a word for it where you just neutralize the person where it's like the person is unconscious bleeding and you're they're just waiting for an ambulance you know you, you try to not stomp his head while he's unconscious a few times you know like you try to control yourself like that but for sure like we're, we would all do that it always ceases to amaze me in public on the road where people will like push other people's buttons right someone cut somebody off and they pull up and they're falling, they're honking at them, or something happens at the grocery store, they bump into them and they start trying to escalate it. You don't know that dude. You don't know if that dude's got nothing to lose. You don't know if that dude's on the end of his rope and he just doesn't care. You don't know how motivated that guy is. Like, you don't know anything. And like, we always hear these stories. This, 
This is in Vegas. I remember a couple years ago, a mother and a kid um, got in a little road rage incident with another guy. And I don't know who was at fault. I think maybe the kid with the guy was at fault. And the lady was like, honk, honk, fuck you. Get out of the road. And then so she sped off and he followed her. And he followed her all the way to her house, gets out and shoots in the face and kills her. Gets in the car and drives away. <laughs> it's like, you don't know what that what's going on in that guy's life. Like that guy's life, he could have been divorced. He could have recently lost his dog, losing his house, lost his job. And he's got nothing, nothing left. Unhinged. Unhinged. What's the one with, uh, oh man, Michael Douglas, where he loses oh, it. Do you remember that uh, one? Oh, oh yeah, falling down. Yes, that's classic. Oh yeah. That's great. Russell oh, Crowe looks like he'd be a psycho. There it is. I got to watch that movie. I think again. of that one, he oh, lost no. his job, didn't he, or something? It was in traffic. Taylor, you want to watch a movie? Falling down. Falling down is pretty funny. Yeah. Is it Death Sentence? Yes. Death Sentence is a movie I highly recommend. Death Sentence? With Kevin Bacon. It starts off at the beginning of the movie coming home from hockey and his teenage son gets killed in front of him by a gang initiation killing. What? And then he retaliates and then they retaliate harder, but he survives and then he just loses it. And he goes and buys all these fucking guns. Dude, it, the movie's fucking great. Uh, uh, John Candy, not John Candy, John Goodman. John Goodman's in it. Yeah, right there. John Goodman. He's a bad guy. Is or? he a bad guy in the movie? Or yeah, that's what I mean. You're asking the same question. He's a bad guy with uh, money incentive. So he is bad, but he also did help Kevin at one point. It's a good fucking flick, dude. It's fucking crazy. Great movie. He looks pretty rough. I gotta go check out M Hinge tonight. Footloose. Footloose. Yeah. Footloose. That's real old. Terminator. That's what Total Recall. Yeah, the first one. Commando. Commando, that's a good one. All the Steven Seagal movies. You know, Commando was like the uh, the answer to Rambo. Have you watched the doc- the Arnold documentary? Yeah, yeah but... Arnold documentary was amazing. I know. Is it good? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Juji. It was unbelievable. You know, really? you know what, Juji? I don't like documentaries, and I was like really procrastinating watching the Arnold one because I was like, oh, I like like fiction things more. You know, and I kind of knew Arnold's story, but then I started watching it. I was like, it was very interesting. You, you, there, you know, you were about Arnold really you know before. Yeah, it was really good. So I, I recommend it. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I wasn't even going to watch it until Milos was yeah. like, Milos said it was incredible. I'm like, really? Wow. Yeah, I'm like, okay. All, all parts of it, even like the movie part, the politic, the politics part. It was really cool. So many things I didn't know, Antoine. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Okay. Well, thanks for the recommendation. I know you guys are probably more critical. I was more critical about it. I was like, I ain't going to watch this. This is the same story I've heard a million times. It's going to be made for gin pop. That's what I thought. Yes. Way. He covers everything. He covers the extra kid he had and all the things he fucked up on. Oh, yeah, dude. It was, uh, put it like this, man. We started watching it and like, I looked at Lexi. I'm like, fuck, we got to go to bed. And I'm like, Fuck it, let's just watch a little bit longer. You know, like I'm gonna keep watching a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. We finished it in two two nights. Nice. Okay. What's Arnold's latest Under- movie? <sighs> oh my god, he's got tons of movies still coming out. Didn't he? He's had a movie come out. So I here's a question for you guys: If you follow Arnold on Instagram, why is he promoting his newsletter so much? Like a mailing list? Like what does he need it for? Is he? <laughs> Yeah, it's like every post is about the Arnold Schwarzenegger mailing list. Like, get on his uh, subscriber newsletter so you can get email blasted by Arnold. I know email lists work for other people, but Arnold, there's got to be better ways to make money for that dude. He's got plenty of money. Yeah. I, maybe, he's, I mean, maybe he's not even aware of this. <laughs> it's not Arnold, it's AI. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Parkside. Paid partnership. I don't know. He he seems to be like involved in a lot of projects last well, this past this? year. And it's confusing what he's doing now. What is that post? It's Arnold's Pump Club. That's what I'm talking about. 
it's describing the link in his bio. It's a it's a mailing list. Oh, He's got an email yeah. blast. What why is why does he care? Yeah, link in my bio, the Arnold Pump link. Why don't you go subscribe for the IFBBA May Forest, Antoine? Go up there. Go to the link. Go to the link. Here. Yeah, what is this? Yeah. What is he going to do with it? Like, what does he care? <laughs> no, I don't know. Like, what is it? The brain protector? I don't know anything about this. I've never seen this before. Oh, yeah. He's right. been fucking blasting the shit out of it for the last couple months. The brain. I don't think he has. Somebody else is doing it for him, obviously. Yeah, but why? Arnold Podcast. Well, dude, if you we, in the documentary, he was very clear about these goals and projects he has. Like, once he finished bodybuilding, the reason why he wanted to stop bodybuilding is because he's won everything. He did everything. There's nothing else to do. And then once he wanted to be an actor, he wanted to be the best actor. Then once he, like, got his top movies, then he's like, well, shit, I think I want to run. And then I want to go change this and do that. Like, he always has these goals to create and do new things. I think that's just his nature to... Oh, look at that. We'll constantly strive to do something else. Arnold? Yeah. H him and Stallone didn't like each other, though. I know. Back then, I know. So Arnold's Pump Club is a daily podcast by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thanks to a, to a, thanks to a helpful machine he trained, Arnold shares three tips from his daily newsletter each day. And in just five minutes, you'll have the support, information, and inspiration you need to live a healthier life. So wait. Arnold shares three tips from his daily newsletter each day. Thanks to the helpful machine he trained. What what does he mean? <laughs> uh, you want is, there's a preview right here. Let's play let's play it. I'll just a fucking AI. How, how old is he? He's going he's getting senile. I don't know. How old is this guy? Welcome to 72 Arnold's Club. Or as yeah. I like to call it, the positive corner of wellness. This daily digest is designed to make you healthier in about five minutes. Fitness and nutrition doesn't need to be so complicated. You don't need to stress every little detail. Instead, I'll help you focus on what really matters and help you create habits. And those habits will become routines that you can do without the next phase of my fitness crusade. Our daily email launched in January and in just three months, 300,000 people village. have joined our village. We aren't just lifting weights. Oh. We are lifting up the whole world. And I want to reach everyone because everyone deserves to be healthy and fit. I'd love to bring more positivity into your lives. I trained a machine with about every little detail of my voice. I gave it the full schnitzel experience. It is and you know what? I can barely tell the difference. If you've seen my oh, movies, look, look. Uh, I know what you might be thinking. I couldn't possibly read these e emails every day. But that's not an excuse. So I trained a machine with about every little detail of my voice. I gave it the full schnitzel experience. And you know what? I can barely tell the difference. If you've seen my movies, yeah, what the fuck? Uh, I know what you might be thinking. But don't worry. <laughs> this machine is a good machine. And if it ever turns bad, I will terminate the problem. So join us. My goal from the beginning has been to give you something that doesn't take up much time. Wow. I I, I, I totally get your point, Antoine. I totally I mean, uh, Juji, I get your point. It's yeah, like... This is like AI Arnold. So it's, I want I want to hear Arnold's AI voice, which I don't think we can. Recent we just research did. suggest no, that was yeah, it. it's probably it, dude. The AI voice can be identical, it would be a guarantee, it would be absolutely identical. Look, look right here, right here. That, we just listened, we just listened to it. That was it. You did that, was it? Yeah, that was the AI. You didn't know that? Yeah, so you're right. It, it looks, it sounds the same. I don't like this AI shit, dude. Yeah, come on, man. Come on, Arnold. The whole point of your movie was like killing the machine, and now you are becoming the machine once again. Now you're creating one. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the Arnold Spoon Club lift up the world. <laughs> She's laughing. I'm really bad at accent. You know what? You know what? I, Taylor is like was laughing so hard when I was trying to do a UK accent. Taylor, how did I do it again? Can you give me an example? We're gonna go for tea now. We're gonna go for tea now. <laughs> That's not good. I told you I'm not good at it. I just told you. I only I can only do my accent. 
The French one. I, Taylor, give me another example so I can like actually do it. Say it. Say something. Quick. Your life, kind of. My name, my name is Antoine, and I, I will go store, the store. No, <laughs> for dinner, something for dinner makes me think about that again. I, I talked about it at the gym again. I guess we'll have a, a weird, deep thought. I kind of share it for three days, so I, I'm going to share it again, and we can end the podcast with that thought. So you wake up tomorrow morning in another dimension where you are a woman as you, but with your brain of this dimension as a man. Oh, fuck. Okay, so is it that? So you, you, Alexia is a man. So everything is... Alexia would probably have more fun. So so, so Alexia... <laughs> So everybody's re reversed, right? So Juji uh, would be a woman, Jujet, and Sam would be Sam, the man. I would be Antoinette. And Taylor would be Taylor, because <laughs> it's a guy's name too. So the whole thing with that, then I started imagining like, oh my God. I don't, imagine if you're single, right? Also, even worse. Oh my God. I don't want anybody going inside my vagina. <laughs> I don't like the idea of, of a man putting his penis in my yeah. vagina. First I don't thing, like the idea of me liking being fucked in the vagina either. The first thing you're going to do if you wake up in a female body is you're immediately going to put your fingers inside of you. No, I would not. <laughs> yes, definitely. Hey, Tuttle, the first thing you did when you woke up in this world, did you put your finger up your ass? No. No, the first thing no. I'd do is I'd probably be like, this boot. No, no, I mean like as, as a man, the first time you notice you have an asshole, did you put your finger in your asshole? No, but what I'm saying no. is like, if Alexia, <laughs> dude, if Alexia woke up with a dick, I do immediately. She'd be like, "I'm gonna go put this in no, a girl." No. But she, <laughs> she doesn't know that she was a girl before. You're the oh, I one. thought you said it was the same brain. Yes, the does, same brain. Yeah, she has the same brain as she had in that dimension from the start. She never was a woman. You're the only one in this world that's reversed that was a from this our world before. So oh. everybody thinks you're a woman. <laughs> God damn, Antoine's creating some rules for this shit. <laughs> but you know what I don't need? Yeah, penis maybe. in my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but the, the thing you is, just become a lesbian. Imagine, I don't know what I would yeah. do. I don't like the idea of it. The whole thing. That's what I mean. So <laughs> I'd probably use yeah, the object first who, who would you let? Who would you let go inside of you? It's it's like you would have to really trust that person. Taylor, yeah, but where's the wig? <laughs> Yeah, bring the wig. I'm going to finish something with the wig on. Maybe this whole thing is about me coming out. For seeing, seeing what you guys would say. I would never do that. I don't like the idea of it. Then I listen to what you guys would say. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, yeah, no no wigs tonight. I don't know where it is. Maybe I threw it away. Uh, well, thank God. Like I don't think I'll ever have to find out and deal with that. Uh, I was talking to people that, that working at the front desk at the gym. Hey, you know what, guys? And I said all that. They were like, because they're like early 20s, like 21, 22, just like, I don't know. Not, <laughs> and this is, sometimes I forget I'm 36 years old, bald and 300 pounds. Because <laughs> in, in my head, Gigi, I'm still I'm still the same guy <laughs> we were like in our early 20s, right? I don't think like I, yeah. I see myself that much different in some sense. So when I talk to like, I don't know, like people or young people, 18 year olds or whatever. Like, I forget how I look and that I'm the old guy now. The other day I was talking with some the group outside. Taylor was there and I, I just said something about like, I don't know, uh, sex or was it a dildo? I don't remember what it was. But then there was a 17 year old girl in the group. And I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, sorry. Damn it. You're here. Like, I, I forgot there was like a minor in the group because because for me it's like i'm talking to a group of young people i'm like still young in my head but she's <laughs> like this is a this guy is old he's 300 pounds looks like a whatever it is freak and he's like uh balding and he's 30 he looks, looks old guy right white in the beard saying stuff about dildos in my presence like i don't know sometimes i gotta be more conscious of like who i'm talking to is what i'm saying well, the thing is this, we're just young souls. There's some people who are just old. My buddy who's a painter, 
works with tons of other people in the whole blue collar industry. And he's always like cracking jokes, saying inappropriate shit. And he's like, bro, 50%, 60% of the people are just kind of like, oh, easy there, Chris. You might want to bring your volume down a little bit. You might get people upset. He's like, dude, lighten up, dude. Relax. <laughs> like, I'm just cracking a joke. But he tells me all the time. He like try to throw a, a f crazy joke out there to see see the people's vibes. Oh, and they're like, yeah. they get all like uptight and all weird. Yeah, yeah, dude. We're just we're just young souls. You know what it is? I think like uh, people who stop be being young or doing young things once they get really really old, they probably like if they would have the option. Hey, would you? Did you wish you had more time where you would act like yourself, like the young self, or? I guess I guess it's all about enjoying life more, maybe. It's who you're married to, who you associate with. You're nine years older than me, and Taylor is nine years younger than me. So it's crazy how like wow. the age is like so like the age gap is like goes far like that. But I find that Taylor is like maybe <clears throat> only twenty seven, but she's way more mature emotionally spiritually. Think of this person. I'm gonna say this person, and all of you are gonna be like definitely doesn't act as age tony hawk my yeah. whole time my, my whole life growing up seeing him in movies seeing him interviewed on uh you know uh x games i'm always like they're like oh you're out here having fun skateboarding he's got like skater pants on they're like yeah i'm 50 you're like what <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to him on a podcast he's still kind of like that in his head yeah that's what i mean yeah that that's that's the the moral of this podcast that and torture torture is interesting sometimes so <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for uh Jesus. watching to all the listeners uh comment below which one is your favorite torture method and uh, we'll see you guys later <laughs> oh, <God. laughs>